Hey you, do you like random drugs that you found on a sidewalk, maybe near a dead homeless guy? Do you like to inject random things into your veins that either make you run faster, turn into the Hulk, give you unlimited food and water, stop all types of pain in your body, make you resistant to radiation, or maybe just give you unbelievably ridiculous perception? Are you also near a lab called Terra Group? Are you also in a war-torn area of Russia? Well, if you are, then that's awesome. Because today, in this video, very similar to my last video, where we talked about quests and helping out new players, we're going to be talking about medicine and injectors and all the various type of things that you can put inside your body or otherwise fix your crippled body after you get shot in the face by a Lapua. Just like that video, this is gonna be geared towards new players who are just starting out. So nothing too crazy. You're not gonna have me telling you the stats on all of these just to help you get into the game a little bit easier if you're new and kind of understand what injectors you should take and what situation you should use them in. And a little disclaimer, Unfortunately, with the nature of Tarkov, most of these are going to be locked until you're level 15 when you have the flea market, but it's still a good video to watch so you have in mind if you run into these in the wild or if you get lucky enough to buy some from traders. So without further ado, let's talk about some medicine. All right, because this can become a very complex topic the deeper you look at it, I've broken this down into three distinct lists. And believe it or not, not every injector in Tarkov are on these lists because some of them just aren't valuable and they're not worth your money at all. So these three lists in question are must have, good to have, or nice to have, and extra. Now the first injector we're gonna be talking about, and it's probably the best injector in all of Tarkov, evident by the fact that it's number one on the must have list, and that is Propital. Now, why is Propital so good? Well, for two reasons, really. Number one being the fact that it's relatively inexpensive. Depending on what time in the wipe you're playing, you're looking at around 30,000 rubles to 25,000 rubles. If you're towards the end, it might be cheaper than that. Probably, like right now, if I recall, it's 30,000 because a lot of people can make it in their hideout in their level three med station. But if you're really early on in the wipe, it's probably going to be more expensive than that. Probably like 35 to 40,000 rubles, maybe even more because nobody has their hideout that far leveled up yet. Also, the second reason why Probatol is so good is because it stops all your bleeding. If you're in a really long fight, and you got tagged a lot and you're just leaking your blood everywhere is out of many different holes in your body for bullets flying through you then you can pop the propital and it will stop your bleeding for a limited time so it's really good if you need to get back into a fight and if you don't have time to do a slow heal animation like a med pack an ifac an afac or a grizzly so on and so forth so if you're leaking and you need a quick boost jab this in your arm and you'll be good to get back in the fight it will save you nine out of ten times if you use it correctly it's not going to save you on the verge of death but if you're starting to get a little hurt there it's a really good pick me up and there are some side effects as with every injector in targoff nothing's ever a win-win there's always a trade-off you're going to have hand tremors towards the end and you're going to have a tunnel effect so if you're still in that fight after the really long duration of this thing then it's going to get a little hectic because your screen's going to get really dark and your accuracy might not be good. But still, it is one of the best injectors in the game simply for the fact that it can get you back into a fight and it gives you time to figure out what your next move is. So if you can go into raid with this, definitely try to have one or two of them on you. And one last thing, keep an eye on your food and water because the more medicine you use, your food and water is commonly impacted, but still. The benefits outweigh the negatives of this thing. Try to always have one on you if you can. Number two on the list of must-have injectors that you should try to bring in a raid with you every time you can is adrenaline. Now I'm pretty sure you can guess why I would put adrenaline so high up on the must-have list and why everyone is kind of into consensus agreement on that it's so good. But I'll tell you anyway, it boosts your physical capabilities and it gives you a really decent health regeneration buff. So boom, you're leaking blood everywhere as you popped a Propital. Now you need to keep the fight going. You're maybe getting a lot of shaky hand recoil and you just need to stay focused. Boom, pop it adrenaline, you're back in the game. 
It gives you better recoil control. It removes pain. It's a better painkiller than Propitol. Gives you endurance and strength. Like I said, it boosts your physical capabilities. So maybe you need a reposition, but you're hurt. You can't really run. You're low on stamina. Get this adrenaline in you. And then you're off to the races. Maybe you got out of a fight, but there's more people coming to third party and you just need to leave. Pop adrenaline. It will help you out in the long run. And again, this is in the same price range and once again there are side effects once the duration is over you're gonna get a pretty heavy hydration recovery nerf and then a energy recovery because you're gonna be going out like 110 miles per hour for a little bit or you're gonna just i should say you're gonna be using all of your energy really quickly because you have a lot of adrenaline pumping through you when you inject this thing and when that wears off you're gonna feel the crash so if you need a reposition, if you need to get yourself all hyped up for a fight, Adrenaline is a good combo with Probitol. The next stim slash injector on this list, and I wouldn't be bouncing those terms back and forth a lot, they're just the same thing. My brain just likes to swap terminology sometimes, but the next one on this list is going to probably be considered a hot take, as there's a lot of injectors that arguably can take its place and i'm sure a lot of people will have recommendations for ones to take this next one's place but again the way i formatted these lists and the way this video is laid out similar to my last one is it's for new players and the next injector is really easy to understand and you can find them pretty commonly and that is morphine this is probably going to be the easiest stim to wrap your head around it is quite literally a painkiller. That's all it is. It's all morphine is. It gives you 300 seconds of removed pain, which is quite a long time. That's why it's here, because it can get you... It's a better effect than painkillers, and it's quicker, and it's honestly a little bit quieter, which is a weird thing to mention, but sound is so important in Tarkov. If you have a morphine and you have painkillers, you would probably want to go with the morphine. Quick, silent, and you get a really good painkiller debuff, again, for 300 seconds. So all three of these stems, Probitol, Adrenaline, Morphine, all kind of work in the similar realm together. Probitol really stops your bleeds, all of that good stuff, and Adrenaline kind of is a like a Morphine in a sense, because you get Painkiller and Health Regeneration. But Morphine's just good to have on you. It's so cheap. It's one of the cheaper stems on here, and you can find them commonly. Like every time I go to, I call the landmark Crack House on Customs, but it's the Medicine Building by Palace. Again, these are some terms, if you're new, you might not really know, but a little foreshadowing. And if there are some people watching who know Tarkov, this one, you can pick that up. You can find them everywhere. So every time I go to the medicine building, I always find them like like on the shelves and the floor and stuff like that. And it's really like 15,000 rules, 10,000 rules, and you can make them really early on in your hideout. So overall, Morphine's an easy one to get your hands on. You should try to always have it with you. It's a really, really good painkiller. It gives you a lot of time to move about and get rid of your like grunting because when you're hurt in Tarkov and stuff you cough you wheeze you whine because you're in pain <laughs> so 300 seconds of this and quick silent good to have up next at number three on the must-haves and this is where we're getting into kind of the funny drugs a little bit this is where things get a little wacky we are looking at sj6 now what sj6 does is it literally turns you into Sonic. If you get a really bad spawn and you're far away from everything you need to be, you can inject this in your vein. You basically have unlimited stamina for a long time. It makes you run faster and you don't have to worry about panting and stopping because you need to catch your breath. Same deal if you're in a combat situation and you just need to get the hell out, you can inject this and run. Now, the best utilization of this that I've seen is in a General Sam video. I'll link it in description if I can find it. It's probably probably not going to find it, but it's in one of his videos where they're in Health Resort and they just need to get out, so they inject SJ6 and they run across Shoreline without stopping to get away from the resort. So if you get a bad spawn, you need to run somewhere to get to a quest area early, or if you need to get out of a fight because things just aren't going your way, you can pop an SJ6 and just run, get out of there. Literally turns you into Sonic. One of the more expensive stims, but it's really good to have if you're able to get your hands on it. So, the last one on the must-have list is Zagustin. Now, Zagustin is going to sound very similar to Propitol because they do the same thing in a sense, but there's two key differences that make Zagustin stand out from Propitol. First being that not only 
does it stop your light and heavy bleeding? It actually prevents you from getting another bleed for 180 seconds. And that's really good in a combat situation because when bleeds stack, they really suck and bleeds can stack quickly. You can have a light bleed stack and a heavy bleed stack at the same time. You're just a leaking faucet. So being able to have this stop them and also prevent you from getting any more allows you to completely focus on the situation you're dealing with. It also gives you a vitality buff for a certain amount of time and of course, with every injector, just as a disclaimer for all of these, there's always some side effects. So for Zagustin in particular, you're gonna be looking at a hydration recovery nerf and hand tremors, and you're gonna have a metabolism issue. So what that translates into for any new player is your food and energy are just gonna be decreasing really quickly. And another little disclaimer, with all of these stims, if you go into a raid, planning to use stems and heavy medicine always bring food and water so you're able to get yourself topped off on those because you can actually die really quickly if your food runs out or if your water runs out so always make sure you're prepared for that but Zagustin always great to have if you're able to get it once again a little bit expensive but still not too high up there unfortunately these are harder to find you might not get them until level 15 but if you do manage to get your hands on one try to bring it in with you if you can all right, I hope you're drugged up and ready to keep going because now we're going to move on to the nice to have list. Now, there's actually less injectors on this one because I didn't want to overload anyone with a lot of information because there's a lot of injectors in Tarkov. And the first one we're going to be talking about here is melatonin. And I hope I pronounced that correctly. I think I did. Maybe it's melatonin. I don't care. But either way, what this injector does, it basically turns you into a tank. The most important thing is you get a a negative 10 damage reduction on all parts except the head. So if you, it literally makes you really tanky. It, unless if you get shot in the head, it's game over. But usually if you get shot in the head anyway, it doesn't matter because it's your head. But the rest of your body is stronger and you get a massive increase to your strength, endurance, and stamina recovery. This could be seen as a, pri a fight prolonger and just overall good injector to have. Not needed because of all the other ones we mentioned, but good to have if you have a few spares. Up next for number two on the nice to have list is the mule stim. Now the mule stim basically turns you into Norman Reedus from Death Stranding. It increases your carry capacity by a great deal. So if you find yourself in a situation where you absolutely gutted an entire squad of people or you come across boss and somehow you killed the boss, by the way, killing bosses requires a lot of skill, so I compliment you if you manage to take one out because they're basically aimbotters. And you can't normally carry a crazy amount without feeling the heavy repercussions of moving really slow and running out of just energy really quickly. So Mule, pop that in your vein, you can literally carry a shit ton of stuff and get out with millions of rubles worth of equipment. Carry out the entire raid on your back with Mule, there's a will, there's a way, you can do it. This is the dream drug for those chads out there, even though I'm not a chad myself, but if you find yourself inundated with loot, maybe you go, you know how many times I went to dorms to find the entire raid dead and I can only take like one really good kid off of somebody? Mule would allow it so I can take the entire dorms with me out to the car exit or the campfire if I'm lucky. Mule is great. And again, not on the needed, list but definitely nice to have if you plan to chat up and go in there to pvp or here's another here's another really good tip if you're doing the quest for the tank battery you might want to have a mule on you because the tank battery is the hardest not hardest but the heaviest item in the game carrying it makes you so you literally have to walk one mile an hour so mule comes in clutch in all these situations and it's just a funny drug it's a really wacky drug to have and finally, for the last thing we're going to talk about on the nice to have, and this border is on must have, but honestly, you can take it or leave it. It's really good if you combo it with one of the earlier stims we talked about, but this one is ETG. And this is a last ditch resort. If you're about to die, you need to use this situation because if your tummy is blacked out, if your head's blacked out, if other parts of your body are blacked out, and what I mean by that is your HP and that limb drops to zero because in Tarkov, every part of your body has an HP counter and once it's zero, it's blacked out and that means you have to surgery it, use surgery on it, sur you know, English. I have an English degree and I can't speak it, but you have to use a surgery kit on it to get it out of blacked status and then you can heal it. So if you're in that situation, an ETG is a great way 
to help heal yourself and it pairs fantastically with Augustine so you can pop both of these and it's a really good fight sustainer and again it's kind of that last last ditch effort if things are not going your way and you're like a walking torso use these two and ETG should be a big help for you that's the main thing it does of course like I said disclaimer for everything there's always a drawback you're gonna get a lot of debuffs with this one like energy recovery and energy recovery skill endurance and health all gets hit after the duration's over but honestly if you're at a point where you have to use this you're probably not really considering your, about your your other skills otherwise it's a really nice stim to have and it's good for a chat kit if you're doing that all right we're on the last three stims and while i said we were on the funny drugs already these are the actual funny drugs and there's three of them i'm going to cover them quickly because you're not going to need them 90 percent of the time they're only useful in very specific situations now the first one is obodolobos if i pronounced that wrong i'm sorry tarkov fans i'm gonna be butchering it it's a weird name it looks weird and it sounds weird but what this does it's literally called a cocktail injector it has everything in it but one very important downside is there's a chance of you just falling over and dying the second that it goes into your bloodstream. I don't know the percent chance off the top of my head, but it has a chance to kill you. And if you do survive that, however, it will turn you into a super soldier, quite literally. While the other stims turned you like into somewhat of a tank, this will make you a super soldier. But again, you have to get through that percentage chance you just die. And after the effects were off, you're going to be hurting. So you're going to want to be like literally running to the exit after this is done or popping propitols over and over again because it's going to hurt. And this injector was made by Sanitar, who is a Tarkov boss. So of course, it's not going to be that good for you. But those those funny little guys over at TerraCorp or Terra Group, they decided to make it better and took Sanitar's monstrous of a creation and made Obidolobos 2, which doesn't have the chance of killing you, but the after effects are significantly worse. You will be dying very quickly after the effects wear out. So if you want to spend a lot of money on the second one and you want to get rid of that chance of you dying instantly, then cool. It's a very wacky drug to use if you're trying to do something fun. And if you literally are grasping at straws and maybe you have like a red key card on a scav and for some ungodly reason you have this on you as well, that's the type of situation that you want to use these in. If you have a, like a, a 20 million or however, however expensive a red key card is right now, if you have one of those, you might as well take the chance to use this thing. But if you're on your PMC, that red key card better be in your gamma case or you're going to be hunted down by every Tarkov player. But never use these unless you really, really have to. There needs to be a big risk on the line for you to use this thing. And finally, the very last one is commonly referred to as Blue Blood. And what this does is if you ever play night raids, which are becoming more and more enjoyable as all the hackers like to be in the daytime raids or on labs, what this does is if you get stabbed by a cultist, which are a special enemy type that only spawns at night, we won't really go into that here, but their knives have poison on the blades. This is the only way you can antidote yourself. So if you're gonna be playing night raids, this is definitely a must have. But if you're new, you're probably not gonna be going nighttime because night vision isn't available to you until the flea market and they're expensive. So if you plan on going night, use this, but otherwise it's just an extra. It just saves you from dying from the, the STDs that they stab you with at nighttime. That's all of the injectors on those three lists that we're going to talk about that are very important for you as a new player going into Tarkov. Now, we're going to go through surgery, med packs, and pills very quickly because I don't want to take too much of your time because it's already a long video. It, it can be a lot longer. But we're going to do a quick overview on these and there's not that many so strap in we're going to move kind of quickly through these so let's get going with the med packs first and there's three of them the ai2 cheese i call them cheese but they're ai2s ifac and afax and then grizzlies these are your standard the mill combat treatment med packs the ai2 i call them cheese kits but they are relatively quick to use they're silent they only stop light bleeding and you, their durability really isn't that good your IFAC and AFAC med kits, they have a bigger durability, they stop heavy and light bleeding, and they're a little bit louder, but you, you get more use out of them as well. And finally, your Grizzly kit is what you're going to be using in your hideout to heal yourself up, because Therapist is only going to give you a few free heals. Uh, I think it's up to like level 10 or something, or your first 30 raids. And the Grizzly is your 
catch all. It actually fixes fractures. It has a lot of durability and it is just a really good thing to have. You wanna have a few of these in your stash. You're not really gonna be bringing these into raid with you unless you have a lot of room or a lot of money to lose. But those are your med packs. They're usually wanna have one with you, at least an IFAC or an AI2 every raid because they're med packs. You need them to stay alive and heal yourself back up. And finally are the pills. Now all three of these do the same thing. They're all painkillers and you're really mostly just gonna be using one of these over the other two but I'm gonna butcher the name again, so I apologize. The three painkillers and pills that we have here are the Analogan painkillers, the Augmentin antibiotic pills, and the Ibuprofen painkillers. You're always gonna to wanna to have one of these on you, every raid, because painkillers are a necessity to keeping you alive, and also if you're coughing and wheezing, they will make you be quiet for a few minutes, which is very important. Sound is key in Tarkov. If someone hears you wheezing, they're likely to play aggressive because they know you're hurt. If you have painkillers, you stop wheezing and coughing. If your legs are fractured or broken, you'll be able to walk quicker for a very short duration. The only thing different between these pills is how much they dehydrate you, how many uses you get out of them, and how quick the animation is, but you're always going to want to have at least one on you. They're very important. Believe it or not, that's all of the medicine items that we're talking about that I think are most important for you as a new player going into Tarkov for the first time. And of course, there are more that I haven't talked about, but I never really thought they were important to mention, and they're really easy as well and not really worth the time explaining because it just describes it in the little menu. So if this helped you in any way, please feel free to drop a like and subscribe to the channel where I'll be doing more Tarkov videos and other videos as well as uploading clips from stream. And I live by the idea that in order for games that we love like Tarkov and Destiny and all these other games to continue to get better and grow, we need to have a constant stream of new players to just help keep the population active. And unfortunately, without ranting, a lot of the well-established players in Tarkov actually don't like new players and want new players to stay away or want features that make new players lives hell. Thankfully, there's content creators like Pestily out there as well who aren't like that and share valuable tips and I learned a lot from him. Hopefully this helped and you have a good starting point to get in Tarkov and enjoy your first raids. But wait, if you really like this content and want to see more from me, the silly little druid VTuber, then head over to my Twitch where I stream pretty regularly. It varies week to week because of how chaotic my day job is and just life in general, but I help people live there on Twitch in the chat and I play a lot of Escape from Tarkov and some other games here and there and we're building a community. It's growing pretty rapidly, so it'd be awesome to have you join us and be a part of it. So again, if you really like this content and want to see more funny stuff from me, go over there and check it out and I'll see you in the next one.